Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Trevor Oldham. Thanks for being on the show, Trevor. Thanks, Whitney. Excited to be here. Trevor is a 23-year-old entrepreneur and founder of Podcasting You. He has seen clients have great success raising money through being a podcast guest. And he's going to help us today and just understand what that means and why it could be very important if you're for you if you're in the syndication business. So, uh, Trevor, thank you again for your time. Appreciate you being on the show. Give us a little more of your background and maybe what Podcasting You is, and let's jump in and help the listeners a little bit. Yeah, most certainly. So I actually got started in the podcasting world back in 2015. And back then I was actually hosting my own show. I no longer do, but within that own show, I was booking guests to be on, my, on the show. And then I was also getting myself booked on other podcasts just to you know, broaden the experience of the show. Long story short, I was running that company with a partner. Uh, that partnership ultimately didn't end up working out. So I left the podcast behind, but I had made those contacts and I realized, you know, I learned a lot from getting myself booked on shows, booking clients on, or booking guests on the show. And I was like, hey, maybe this is something that some people would be interested in. I reached out to the guests that I had back on my show and I was like, hey, you know, I know how to get, you know, would be able to get you booked on podcasts. Is this something that you'd be interested in? And, you know, lo and behold, a couple of them said yes. And pretty much since 2017 on, I just started working with different people and started just really finding the different niche industries. We worked with a ton and ton of different industries. And we've just really found that really when it comes to real estate investors, we've found that they have the greatest success um, when they get booked on podcasts. And that essentially what our company does is we work with individuals and get them booked on podcasts, you know, defining their target audience as well. Nice. You need to know who your target audience is, mm -hmm. right? Most certainly. Like, like we say, like some people come on, they like, I want to be on the biggest, best podcast that's out there. And sometimes it's like, it, it's just sometimes not a fit. If you're a self storage investor and you're going on a show that's primarily for flippers, the people aren't just, they're just, their message just is not going to resonate. So you really just, if you're going to be on these podcasts, you want to make sure you're speaking to your target audience and not, you know, you can tell right away, you can check out the podcast description. You can see the previous guests website. So, I mean, there's tons of tools and research resources out there that you can use to make sure that you're hitting your target audience with on a podcast. So, you know, it made me think of something else. You know, if someone hasn't been interviewed, maybe ever, but they know they need to get out there, they, you know, uh, and we'll go into maybe some more detail about their story and things like that. But, you know, should, you know, you just mentioned like the, the bigger podcasts or maybe with more followings type of things like that. But, you know, would you suggest starting there or, or maybe getting a little practice on a few other shows first? I definitely recommend getting practice on a few other shows. You'll notice that just from the beginning of when you do your first podcast to doing, say, your 10th podcast, your story is going to change and you're going to hash out. There might be some awkward moments that come up in your first couple of interviews, but you're really able to hash it out on those smaller shows. Plus, you think about if a show says, you know, let's say it came out a month ago, and you're able to get yourself booked on. They're pretty relatively easy because they probably don't have that many people wanting to be on the show. So you help out the you help out the host by being a guest on their show where they didn't have to find you. And then they help out you by helping you craft your story. So I always recommend if someone has never been on a single podcast before, you always want to start small. Trust me, you don't want to go on, you know, some of the top tier shows that are out there and sound pretty stupid or have no idea what you're talking about, where it's nice having those smaller shows. And there's, you know, there's million, not, I don't want to say millions, but there's a lot of different, uh, you know, a lot of real estate investing podcasts out there um, that are just starting every day that you can get yourself booked on. You know, I was asked to be on a couple of bigger name shows. Um, and, and, and at that time, I hadn't been interviewed maybe once or twice. And I, I, I postponed it until I'd been interviewed a few other times before I, you know, because I wanted to kind of perfect my story a little bit, just like you're talking about. Uh, and speaking of which, you know, I, I'd love for you to highlight on that a little bit about or talk through, you know, helping somebody think about their story and how they're you know, perceived by the audience and how they talk about themselves or their business and, you know, help us to think through that a little bit. So maybe we're not just starting from complete scratch. Yeah. When someone's going on a podcast, you got to think that 
I always think, how are you going to benefit the host's audience? You're just going on spending anywhere from, you know, say 20 minutes on a shorter podcast to say an hour on a longer podcast. Usually it's not going to be three hours like a Joe Rogan show. It's very, very untypical. But if you're going to be spending this time, you want to benefit their audience. So what I say is if you're going out there and pitching a host, instead of using words like I, uh, I, me, or my, use words like you and your, like, instead of saying like, this is how I can benefit your audience. You can say, this is how your audience would learn from, you know, my, you know, whatever you may have, whatever your benefit may be to that audience. So when you're crafting your story, you always want to be talking about the benefits you're going to provide their audience. You know, let's say you own, I don't know, 10 million units, <laughs> whatever, the, you know, whatever the number may be, you know, that's great. But how's that going to benefit their audience? You know, you can plump, you know, beef yourself up as good as you want. But at the end of the day, if the host is like, all right, you know, he sounds great, but is he just going to come on here and pitch my services or is he going to actually provide value to my audience? So you want to make sure that you're doing your research on the show and really targeting that show based on the benefit that you can provide to their audience. Cause you know, if you can give, I guess, you know, your best secrets away, people are going to be attracted to you. They're going to want to go to your site and find out and learn more about you. So I say, just give as much value as you can to the host audience. Like, it takes a lot of work to have guests on the show and not even including the back end work. I'm sure what you know of editing the show and, you know, getting it ready for social media and, and all of that good stuff. So you really just want to, you know, hone in on how you're going to be benefiting their audience. And when you're thinking about your benefits, it's almost like, you know, what's the number one thing that someone could learn from you? And I guarantee you there's someone in that audience that can learn something for you. Even if it's one person, that's one person you touch, if it's 10, 20, however it may be, you know, your story and what you're able to share is going to be able to impact, you know, as many people as possible. But even if it's just one person, you know, I think that's a good, uh, good thing to happen. You know, so many podcasts begin with tell us about yourself, right? Or tell us how you got into this industry or whatever the focus is of that show, right? You know, and how much time do you suggest someone spends on, you know, talking about their background, their history, their, you know, their company, all these things, you know, building up to maybe where they're at now, or, or even their, you know, them personally, as opposed to just their business. I say about anywhere from three to five minutes, I find it sometimes best, like, just depending on the podcast, like for myself, I'm going on like an entrepreneurial podcast, I'll go like a way more, you know, in depth story on how I became an entrepreneur. But I find that people like stories, you know, I started at zero units. I got to 500 units. This is what happened in the middle. This is the failures I encountered. These are the successes I encountered. This is how, you know, basically how I got from point A to point B. And then you're able to elaborate through that, through the rest of the interview. So I find really having that story of almost like a rags to riches sort of story where everyone, everyone basically starts off as a beginner. How can you help someone who is a beginner get to where you are at that point in your life? Yeah, so ultimately, you, you can't have the same story for every podcast you're being inter interviewed on. Is that correct? Yep, yeah, correct. You definitely, like if I'm speaking to your audience, you know, it's going to be different than if I'm speaking to an audience on, you know, entrepreneurship, you know, just two different audiences. I find that, you know, you can really just tell the audiences that you're speaking to just by reading the show description and checking what's out there. And you'll notice, you know, again, you can start on those smaller shows and hone your different, you know, topics, different speeches, what you're going to be talking about on those smaller shows before you go on those sort of bigger shows that are out there. Yeah. So I noticed just in some of the stuff that you sent over or your team did about you being on the show that it was very, it was specific to our audience. Uh, you know, and, and so I wondered about that. The great tip. Anyway, I, I just feel like most people, you know, they want to be interviewed a bunch, but they feel like their stories the same can be the same every time, you know, for every show. Um, so, but let's talk a little bit about, you know, specifically, uh, help how you're helping people even raise money specifically, you know, by being on shows and talk, and let's talk about that specifically. Most well, certainly. So we've had, or what we've experienced is a lot of our clients come to us that are trying to raise money for whatever deals that they may be putting together. They're looking for, you know, investors to come in and invest in that deal. And we recently had one investor who's been with us for about a year. And he just happened to mention to us that through, you know, doing podcast interviews. Um, basically, he'd be going on real estate investing related shows, talking about the deals that he has going. And he was able to raise millions of dollars in equity from being, you know, from going onto these shows. So we found that not just him, but other real estate investors, we were able to go onto podcasts and share your story and then share the deals that you have coming up. It piques people's interest into investing with you, especially, you know, if you have a nice website out there, you know, say a lead magnet where people can learn more you know, information about what you have to offer. It's sort of like an easier strategy. And plus, instead of like 
a direct mail campaign where you send it out, you know, once, and then you might have to send it out a couple more times where with a podcast interview, these real estate investors are able to go on, spend, you know, however many minutes, let's say 30 minutes or so. And then that content is pretty much evergreen as the podcast keeps going. Even if the deal changes, which I'm assuming if someone listens to your interview, it's a year later, they're probably going to know that the deal's not available anymore. They'll still be able to go out and check you out. So we've really just seen a powerful, um, you know, come from people from these real estate investors going onto these podcasts and talking about themselves and talking about their deals. And we found that it's really just honing in on your target audience. You know that if people are listening to real estate investing podcasts, one, they have an interest in real estate. And usually if someone's investing in real estate, they usually have a good amount of working capital or trying to get a good amount of working capital. So that's, you know, you want to, we've just found, you know, targeting these sort of high net worth investors on these shows. And it's not even just real estate investing shows. You can target, you know, dentist shows, you can target doctor shows, you know, especially when it comes to syndication and trying to raise money, you're going after these high net worth investors. So it's more than just real estate shows, but we've really just seen, it just gives you basically just full access to these individuals who have that high net worth and who have that money to be able to invest with yourself or your company. You hit a good point there too, about thinking about shows that are, let's say, you know, if you're raising money for real estate, then, but thinking about shows outside of just real estate. Mm -hmm. Right. I love how you said, you know, dentist shows, you know, but tell me a little bit of maybe or elaborate on that a little bit, uh, but then tell me about, you know, trying to get on a show like that. Well, obviously I'm not a dentist, uh, you know, and, and, and know nothing about it. Uh, you know, but you know, how do I get myself on that show? What's my value? I mean, obviously it's about investing in real estate, but, but you know, how do you position that to, you know, that you're going to bring value to their listeners? We, what we do is we go, we make sure, you know, if it's a dental show, you know, we look at them, some shows for dentists, they're only about how to grow your dental practice. So that's obviously, you know, that's not going to be a fit. That's not something we would want to pitch a client on if it's just dentist to dentist. But you'll find that within the dentist, you know, podcast niche, there's shows where they say, you know, how to build financial freedom as a dentist. So we're like, okay, you know, that's a good fit. These are dentists who want to build financial freedom. So what we'll do is we'll go out there and say, you know, this is one way in which, you know, your, your audience, your dentist can build financial freedom through real estate investing. So we really hone it into those real estate investor audience by looking at the show. Oh, you have had other people on the real estate space come onto your show. This is myself, you know, so it's really just looking at that show description, looking at the past guests and really just making sure it's a dental show um, for usually dentists who are trying to raise money. I know there's one, I believe it's called get off the dental treadmill. Um, you can check that show out. So that's one where that's an example of dentists who are, you know, basically stuck in the rat race, working all the time, looking for financial freedom. So that would be like an example of where we'd want to pitch clients to be on that show where it's dentists talking about how to become financially free. So it sort of just fits into what the real estate investor would be talking about. What about some mistakes that, that you see often, you know, people trying to, or whatever they're doing, but mistakes that are being made when they're either trying to get on other shows like you're talking about, or just what, are you maybe even more so how they present themselves on the show, uh, you know, when they're trying to raise money? I find that people, the way that the number one problem we see is people just not, I guess, just not targeting the right target audience. And I say that, let's say if you're raising money um, for, you know, to invest in multifamily properties, for example, and you want to go on a show that's raising money for mobile home parks. It's just, it's just, it's not going to be a fit. And even if that person says, yes, I'd like to have you on, chances are you're not going to see a benefit out of it. So that's like the, probably the number one thing we see is people not targeting the right shows. And then two, you know, you don't want to just, you can create a pitch, you know, and within that pitch, you want to make sure, you know, you put your bio, your expertise, how you're going to benefit their audience, all that good stuff. But you also want to make it personalized to that show. I mean, it, and it's super easy. Just look at the show's description, see who they, who they've had on, you know, and then personalize it to that show, you know, for Whitney, for your show, for, you know, the, as an example, you know, I want to target it specifically to your audience and what you're going to be talking about. And every show is going to be different. Every show is going to have different keywords within their description. So you just want to make sure when you're targeting a specific show, you're using sort of their language, quote unquote. And that's just a big problem we see is people just targeting the wrong shows. They just want to say, oh, I want to be on any real estate investing podcast. I don't care. It's like, no, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just want to make sure you're being on the right show for your target, for the target audience you want to speak to. And then when you pitch that host, it's making sure you're referencing their show and gearing it towards that show as well. So it's all just comes in full circle and make sure you're targeting the right individuals. I'm um, in the right host that you want to be on. Any advice towards 
you know, say having your, your website or a lead magnet or your call to action kind of prepared, you know, before your own shows? Definitely a website. I would say number one, a lot of times, I want to say a lot of times in the past, we've had worked with clients early on that never had a website and it's going to be insanely hard to get yourself booked. If you're just saying using your LinkedIn account, you definitely want to have a website. You can use like something like Squarespace where it might be $150 for the year. Even if, you know, you could go in and create it yourself. So you always want to have that. Just make sure that you have something professional as a website. Super simple. It shouldn't be too hard to create. It's really not that much money. It's going to make you look professional. And then when it comes to a lead magnet, this is something where you want to be sending the podcast listeners to, whether it's a free report, whether, you know, it's templates, whether it's guides, any of that good stuff, courses, there's so many different things that you can create as a lead magnet. So this is where you could send a podcast audience to learn more about yourself, more about your company, and then they can start start to get into your funnel. And then you could, you know, they're on your email list and then you can start to send them, you know, new deals that come in. They get to learn a little bit more about you. You get to promote yourself to them. And then that way they become a little bit more comfortable. And who knows, they, they came on your list today. Who knows, you know, come in December, they say, Hey, you know, I've been following this guy for a while now. I think it's time that I wanted to invest with them. I've checked out his properties. I've seen, you know, his promotional materials. He looks pretty good. So it's sort of just starting that traction of getting someone into your funnel where, you know, maybe not today they're going to invest with you, but down the road, whether that's six months, six months or a year, it might pay off down there. So to give us kind of a, maybe a picture or paint a picture of, of working with you, you know, and, and working with a company like, like yourself, what does that, uh, you know, take or out of our off our plate you know or how does that benefit us most well, certainly so basically what we do is if you wanted to go out there and get yourself booked on podcasts it would be a combination of you'd want to create a podcast pitch um, you'd use a site called listennotes.com you could go on there you could search for real estate investing podcasts you could go out find the contact information you could reach out to the host do the follow-up and all that sort of stuff so our company just tries to make it super simple we'll go out we'll create a pitch for you a media kit. And then on our back end, we just have a database of shows, um, of real estate investing shows that we've put together with contact information, um, with hosts we've worked with in the past. We've had those built up relationships. So basically, we'll just go out there and after we have your promotional materials created, we'll pitch you to these podcast hosts and then we just book your interviews on your behalf. So our main goal is to save you time. Anyone can go out there and get themselves booked on podcasts. It's not, it's not the hardest thing in the world. There's so many out there and I'm sure if you pitch enough, someone would like to have you on. Our goal is just for someone who's a busy professional that just doesn't want to add another thing to their plate. That's where we're able to just come in and work with you where you come with us and we learn about your backstory. And then pretty much from there, we go out, handle everything from there. And then we'll just send you uh, when your interview is booked. Nice. Okay. So what else, what else, you know, should I have asked you or, or what else could you highlight for people that are trying to be on shows or, you know, maybe that we didn't discuss? Yeah, I think, when it comes, I want to touch on when someone's researching shows for themselves to be on, um, a tool I find is super useful is called listennotes.com. And for anyone that wants to start, you know, go out there, start to get themselves booked on shows, you can go on listennotes.com. You can type in, say, you know, mobile home investing. It'll pull up all shows relevant of mobile home investing. And then you can actually search by podcast. So when you first do it, it'll show up by episode. You can search by podcast. And then you'll see it says, rel there's an option to choose relevance or date. You can choose date. So this will give you basically the most up-to-date podcast. And then there's like some additional filters. You want to make sure the podcast is in English, make sure it's in the United States, you know, depending, depending on where you are and that sort of thing. And basically you can just go through, it gives you a link right to um, Apple. You can click on it, check out the podcast, see if you'd be a fit. And then like on another, you know, let's say a Google sheet, you can just start keeping track of the shows you want. Um, and then you can type in the host's name along with their podcast, get their website, um, and you know, see if they have a contact form on their site. So if, you want, if someone wanted to get started, that would sort of be that, that process of going out there and finding shows. Trust me, if you go to iTunes and you know, type in real estate investing podcast, it's probably going to show you the top ones that are out there. And you probably, those are probably shows you want to be on six months down the road. But for anyone who just wants to get started today, definitely check out um, listennotes.com. Um, I believe... There's a paid version, which is $100 a month. So if you are serious about getting booked, it's super helpful. Um, I highly recommend it. But the free versions are definitely enough. Um, we're free, no dollars <laughs> per month. So it's definitely helpful if you just want to get started out, you know, get on, you know, say five or so interview, five or so podcasts and just check it out. Um, see if that's something that you'd be interested in. 
Do you have anyone in mind, say, that the ideal guest, you know, somebody that maybe the listener or, or, or myself could listen to to say, okay, you know, I hear how he uh, presented himself, how he talked about his business, how he promoted his call to action, whatever it may be. Do you have anybody in mind like that? Most certainly. So I definitely recommend Logan Freeman. Um, so Live Free Investments. I believe he's out of Kansas City, Missouri. So Logan is actually that client that I was talking about earlier in the show um, where he's pretty much our greatest success story was where he's been able to raise millions of dollars in equity. Um, so his website is Live Free Investments. Um, so he's been the one, the one client, not one client, but our best client to date when it comes to raising money. So you can definitely check out his interviews. He's you know on his website, he has a little section um, where he posts all his podcast interviews. So someone can definitely go out and check, um, listen to his story, listen to how he presents itself. Because obviously, you know, if he's able to raise millions of dollars um, and equity, I'm sure there's, I'm sure he's doing something right on these interviews. So I highly, would highly recommend checking him out. I appreciate that. Logan's been on the, on this show a couple of times. So uh, yeah, a listener can always search for him right here. Uh, but uh, Trevor, what's a way that you've recently improved your business that we could apply to ours? I think definitely is putting more systems in place. And basically what I've done is, you know, as in the business, there's so many different things going on every day. And I just started to create these checklists. Like if this happens, you know, these are steps one, two, and three that you're going to do. If this happens, steps one, two, and three that you're going to do. Even, you know, as, as my assistant, I created like, started to create a frequently asked questions that I noticed that questions she just kept asking me to answer for her. I was like, all right, these are the common questions I'm coming in. If any of these questions come into you, this is how you're going to answer them. You know, so it's basically, I've just been implementing systems to try to save my time as much as possible, especially as the longer that you run your business, you're going to see things, you start to run things the same way over and over and over again. Why not just document it and then just outsource it or give it to a team member um, to save you up some time. What's your, uh, no, the number one thing that's contributed to your success? Definitely is perseverance. <laughs> you know, it's starting you know, because, or podcasting you, this is my third company that I started. I started a couple other ones in college and there's just been countless times where, you know, I've, I've encountered failure. Even with this business, there's been times where, you know, a lot of hard lessons to learn. I remember early on, I took a client and um, I ended up getting booked on, I believe 10 or so podcasts, which at that time was a thousand dollars. And then he never paid me. So I learned a hard lesson about, you know, making sure we have contracts in place. And so it's just little things like that you know, learning how to deal with clients and just, just a lot of perseverance. I guess, you know, those things that are going to come up every day in business that are going to be like, oh man, I just want to quit right now. You know, this sucks. I want to go out and just get a good job in corporate America. It'll be a lot nicer. I'll have my paycheck coming in, you know, every two weeks. But you know, that's that one voice inside you, but just know that everyone's going to have these hard days and you just really just got to push through and get to that next level and just, you know, keep on grinding like the rest of us. Trevor, how do you like to give back? The one thing I love doing is I go to high schools around my area and I actually speak to the students on entrepreneurship. I go through um, different ways in which they can get started because I really like to present to them and say, hey, you know, I'm a young entrepreneur. You know, I'm 23 years old. I graduated high school five years ago. And I like to say, you know, just it does, age doesn't really have a factor in your success. You can go out there and you can start a business. And I just walk them through these different ideas on how I've started the, my other businesses, whether that was importing products from China, whether that was starting a blog. And I try to just walk through and give them business ideas and allow them to go out and start their own business. Cause I just think that's something that's not taught enough in schools. And I think that's something that they can benefit from. So it's definitely something that I love to do a couple of times a year. And I was just go to these different schools um, in Massachusetts and just talk to these students, you know, whether that's 20, 30, I think the largest I've spoken to is a crowd of hundred. Um, you know, and I say, even if I touch one kid and one kid, it's like, Hey, maybe I could be an entrepreneur. Maybe I could be a business. And I count that day as a win for myself. Nice. So appreciate you giving back in that way. Uh, especially to kids that are still in school. And I, my eyes were not opened at that time to just the, <laughs> uh, the opportunity of being an entrepreneur. I had no idea, uh, you know, that this world was out there. So I appreciate you doing that. Uh, uh, so tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Well, certainly. So you can check us out on our website, uh, podcastingu.com. That's going to be Y-O-U.com, not the, not the letter U. And then if anyone has any questions, whether that's about podcasting, being a podcast guest, or even think anything about an entrepreneur, on, being in entrepreneurship, you know, especially if you, there's a long, young listener out there, you know, feel free to reach out to me, Trevor at podcastingu.com, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. 
LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.